You know? Yeah. Now, when it comes to, because there's so much to this, and it, it's such a high quality product, and it does cost more than, you know, most of the other ones out there, what are you doing marketing wise to convince people that it is as high quality as we're talking about right now and they're, that they're going to shell out the bucks for it? Yeah, yeah. I've done a really lousy job with marketing, which is ironic, huh? Because I'm a great marketer. I'm great. I got a great brand, though. It's an awesome brand. Yeah. And I tell a hell of a good story. I mean, oh, yeah. my yeah. stories are great. Um, but it's funny because of, because of all the stuff I've been doing and writing the book and mm -hmm. and the brand's been so strong, I've just really not broached the marketing. I mean, I've got I got pro athletes out there. I've got huge celebrities. I've got all these people that are full strength aficionados. I mean, they buy the product, you know? Yeah. You know, I've got all the ESPN group, um, all these guys that are advertising P90X every day are all doing full strength, you know, right. I'm like, it's funny, you know, but um, uh, the thing that I got a long time ago is uh, about the marketing though, and this is really where I'm at right now. I'm kind of relaunching my, um, my two weeks to full strength, which is really a, mm -hmm. I call it the 14 day reboot because what I need people to do is not take a shake, not just taste a shake. I need people to say, look, I'm going to do a shake a day for 14 days. And in 14 days, about day 10 or 11, you start to create a certain momentum in the body. It starts to kind of stabilize. You get a certain mojo. And that what, what you get in two weeks is you get a real sense of how does this fit my life and how is my life going to be changed by the shake. Now, I can say all I want in marketing. I can, I can rant and rave, and the other guy with a piece of crap product can rant and rave as loud as I can. But what nobody else can compete with is the felt experience. So if I get you to try my product, if I get you to try a full strength, I mean, certainly it's not for everyone. There are some people that it won't work for, or they won't get something, or they'll have some other uh, you know, resistance to it. Or my son's um, got dairy allergies, so obviously he's not a full strength kid. Um, you know, so so that, that's, you know, some people are ruled out, but I'd rather rule you out on my dime, then, then, you know, me have to beg for your business because ultimately it's about you experiencing it. I know that the last domain is you have the experience of full strength and you're either going to get it or you're not going to get it. I mean, I just had a guy in here this morning, you know, 42 year old fit, active guy, a father, a guy that his son plays on the same soccer team as me. And, you know, he'd asked me one day to try a full strength or something. And I, and I, I you know, I gave him a, a two week box, you know, and tried it. You know, he just came in, picked up uh, uh, another month's supply. He's been doing that for a year and a half. You know, I mean, I don't have to sell him on it again. I never have to have another ad sent to him. I never have to recruit him again. I mean, these guys live on it. That's the way it is. Because once you've changed a person's life and you've created a certain energy and freedom, and, you know, especially a guy that's, you know, you know, he's a busy guy who wants to stay fit. You know, I mean, I look at what full strength does for me every day. Not does it just save me time, but it probably takes eight, 900 calories out of my daily um, nutrition consumption. I mean, I would eat more food. I would um, gain more weight. I would, I would struggle more with decision making if I didn't have that most reliable thing I do every day. Interesting. There's a very cool, a lot of cool things in there that, you know, it, but it basically all boils down to just providing quality to people and getting yeah. them to enjoy the product and then spreading the word about it. Well, and I think that's, you know, that's one thing you get. People that have had an experience of the EAS brand or, or Body for Life or Red Strength for Life or something, mm -hmm. they get that if, if there's anything my brother and I do is that we over deliver and we're, we're yeah. you know, it's kind of like, it's like a disease of perfectionism, the wonderful perfectionism. I mean, it's nice to have it and it's, it's, it kills people around you because it's really hard to live up to. But the reality is, um, I don't want to, I'm just not the type of guy who can go out there and ask people to take a take crap. I just can't. It just, it just doesn't sit with me, especially as I get older, I have kids and I have more accountability and responsibility in this universe. It's like, you know, the karmic weight of, of, of lying and cheating people just doesn't jive with me. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now I want to jump ahead a little bit. I want to, cause this is important for me to cover and for you, you're also yeah. in the process of creating the nonprofit organization coalition of strength. Yeah. You're at that position now where you can do that. I kind of want to know where the idea came from and what exactly is the Coalition of Strength. Well, and the, the, yeah, the Coalition for Strength, which is you know, one of these embarrassing things I get myself into, which I'm behind in, in the curve and I'm actually really kicking it this year. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's like I look at things that, um, you know, like the reason for being in a nutrition chick business is because I believe that there's a way to get millions and millions of people to consume a nutrition shake and change the way we live energetically, not just change a few lives, but change a lot of lives. That's so I look at these things at this point in my life as, as, as BHAGs, big ideas, right? Big things. And, and I said, so what, you know, I mean, Body for Life Challenge, the Transformation Challenge, all these challenges, all fitness challenges. I love them. I think they're, they're awesome. They're great. But I'm looking at what's the next real 
you know, step function in fitness? How do we change things? Mm -hmm. And if I looked at, I looked at the importance and this kind of came out of writing strength for life and my whole idea about the meme of strength, which is, um, you know, I mean, I, I've got a whole chapters on this in strength for life. It's like, you know, it's great to be physically fit. It's great to be active, but the reality is strength as a component of wellness and lifestyle and fitness has got to be part of it. And, you know, is so many people that, that take up jogging, but they never embrace the, the importance of strength. And I don't mean big hulking muscles. I mean, getting a foundation of strength training, and even if it's power-based yoga or something, so that you're building some lean muscle mass. And I said, you know, there, you know, in my life, nothing more important than educating people on the importance of this so that they're not in the gym trying to figure out how to lift a dumbbell when they're 75 because they have to. Right. And so I looked at all my connections in this industry and all the ways to put this together. And I said, you know, there could be nothing more important to me than, than bringing the, this community of people together and saying, spreading the idea of strength and the importance of strength in all our phases of our life and all our generations. So, you know, the idea is to bring all the people that make strength training equipment, that promote strength training, that own gyms, I mean, because a gym like 24 hour fitness, you know, I've talked to, you know, Mark at 24, you know, they make their money off strength training, not of cardio. Cause anybody can go around, blog around, jog around the street. Right. But you need strength training to draw people in. So, you know, I, I created this idea of bringing all these people together and doing, you know, educating people on strength and creating a fundraiser. And, and I've got this annual day that I call lift the world day. And it's all about um, coming together one day. And what we're going to do is you go to the gyms and you, you sign in and you do this amazing workout and you see how much weight we can lift as a collective whole, as a globe, as a world, right? So we open all the doors and in so doing, we embrace the idea of strength, but we also create a huge fundraiser. So instead of just having a marathon you run, it's, it's, it's kind of like it's, it's your weight marathon, your strength marathon. So we all do it together the same day or the same week and we raise funds and the funds are all about um, the, the, the nonprofit nature is it gives back to the child, to children's fitness, right? Mm -hmm. So we use all this to support athletics and youth fitness. So, I mean, there's nothing more important for us in, in our generations, be it your generation, my generation, or the generation ahead of me to, to, to teach kids once again, because here we are cutting cutting budget cuts everywhere. And what do we do? First thing we do is we cut fitness, right? Well, that's right. brilliant. Next thing we do is cut the arts. Well, that's even more brilliant. So we've cut fitness in the arts. What are we creating? You know, fat computer nerds. I don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't want to create another generation of obesity. I really don't. So, um, the idea for me is just, is to rally the, the, the awareness to rally the awareness and get people active and engaged in, in, in what could be going on for 50 years after I'm gone. I mean, if you look at John F. Kennedy, who started the presidential fitness movement, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that, that was the beginning of fitness in America. I mean, he's long since gone, but fitness in America is still, what he began is still there. Right, right. Now, the interesting thing for me on this, and I know pe people who are listening, there, um, some of them may be looking to do their own nonprofits. Obviously, yours is to a, a much larger scale. But what are some of the things people should, you know, do or not do or be aware of if they're looking to start their own nonprofit organization? Uh, you know, I think the thing about nonprofits is you got to be, I think you got to be awful damn serious with them because of the, you know, all the uh, legalities of it and, you know, the, the way they have to be managed and the responsibility because you take on a hell of a responsibility with it, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I mean, you hear people sometimes even running reasonably sized nonprofits that that just screw up some of the paperwork and land their ass in jail you know you know you just don't you know it i think uh i think there's a lot of ways to run charitable um events and charitable um activities and it's like like bill i mean my brother has supported the make-a-wish foundation yeah. so he's not run his own nonprofit but he's done you know he's the single largest contributor to make-a-wish right. in the history right yeah so i mean you don't have to have your own nonprofit. And, you know, for me, it's like, you know, I want a board and a staff and an individual and a legal firm to run it. I don't want to run it. I just want the concept. And I think that, you know, it's, it, you know, it's it, running. It's a, like anything else, you know, careful what you ask for. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of work's involved in it. Um, yeah. And what I, I want to dive into another area. We're going to wrap up in a little bit, but I know this is a big part for you. And um, that's what I wanted to get into. I want to talk about the success side of things and mindset and yeah. what it takes to be successful. I want to start, I want to know what your definition of success is. Oh man, I tell you what, it's a good one. Uh, success I think is directly related to freedom and the ability to do what I want to do when I want to do it and how I want to do it. And, um, 
you know, so much that's connected to money, but I think one's got to be careful about how it's connected to money or how money's connected. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, there's the, the greed and the flow. I mean, the one thing about being in business that, that, um, you know, one of the great big advantages is it, it, it works as its kind of own self-help program because whatever your blockage is with the world, whatever your internal BS or your internal story is, will get played out in your business. You know, what happens, I think, for a lot of people is it gets played out in their relationship or it gets played out in their job. And as a job, then we just get mad at our boss and we act like they're the ass and um, or we get mad at our, our spouse or whatever it is. And we have these battles. But, you know, it's harder to to get when you're in business and your business for yourself. The thing you play out and the crap that you drag around really get lands right in your own lap. Right. So it, it can't be somebody else's. You can blame them on it for a while. But ultimately, um you know, I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe the whole point of success to me, maybe the whole point of business is um, it's a great way to resolve your your crap and, and create true freedom. Because I think there's a lot of people I've seen that have made a lot of money in their life that live in lives that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. And so um, I think it's freedom and freedom means a, a clarity of a body, mind, spirit to be clear um, with yourself, to be truthful, to be honest and authentic. And um, I think that... Uh, there's there's people I see every day that I go, man, you know, they they might have less money than me or other people. But, you know, that's a hell of a damn good life they're living. Mm -hmm. Now, I know uh, Jill Polish asked you this question and I'm kind of curious. I want to ask it so other people know your definition of success. How does that determine your level of success? Oh, yeah. We had to bring up Joe, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always throws me off. No, I love you. That's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, how does let me let me rephrase your question. How does uh, mm -hmm. your definition of success determine your level of success? Yeah, um, I don't know that it determines. I believe it's a, a, a triggering component. It's kind of like an intention. You know, I think you uh, you you can set mile markers in there, but I, I also think it changes a lot. Um, you know. It, it's, I think I've said a couple of times during our talk here, um, careful what you ask for. So mm -hmm. you can, you can define success and make a mistake in your definition and actually receive it. And then you, you find out that you, you achieved what you defined as success and your def definition was incomplete. Um, and you know, God knows I've had some experiences of that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've achieved the things and created things that I didn't really want when I created them. Um, so, and I, you know, that's the wonderful thing about just continuing to move on, which is, I think that success continues to be defined. Um, and you know, like I, I get clear in my definition a moment ago that, that I've been in a while and, um, you know, the last, uh, you know, few years for me has been, uh, you know, you know, I struggled with the book. I struggled with, uh, um, you know, I'm really rolling my marketing out right now and um, I've got too many things on my plate and, you know, I'm always having to question what is it I, what is it I want to do and what do I really want to do? What do I really want to do? What do I really do? And I think having that, you know, having that practice of, of knowing what your definite success is and questioning it all the time, you know, and it's not a direct answer probably, but I, it's what comes up for me. Right. It's a tough one to answer, but yeah. I figured, you know, you'd be the best one to answer it. So that's one I wanted to ask. Um, one of the other things, though, is to be successful, you've got to fail a lot. I'm a big believer, you know, you've got to fail to learn and then ultimately be successful. What are some of the failures that you've had? Well, and that's a great one. I appreciate the, the failure one. I preach that one, too, a lot. And I think that that's, uh, that's why I think of myself as such a great success these days because I've failed so many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. I, uh, I've... Uh, I failed to, you know, I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff. A lot of my failures, I think, are failures to execute on the potential of things. I mean, I didn't do what I should have done with power building, the opportunity with that. Right. Um, I failed to execute on the Neutros deal. Um, I didn't, I wasn't uh, really clear with my exit from Isatory with Steve. I didn't, you know, I really just, you know, it was kind of like a company that we created that I accidentally created and didn't want. Mm -hmm. Like you were talking uh, about before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know, it's like I got myself into something. It's like getting into a bad relationship. You're like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've failed to, to, you know, I I really think that, uh, you know, I a lot of people would have quit doing full strength by now because it's, you know, it makes money, but it doesn't make tons of money. But it's such an expression of my passion and the people that get a hold of it and the people that touch it are so touched by it. But I've really failed to share it with the world. And it's a responsibility and accountability that I'm really taking upon myself right now. 
Um, I mean, I've just, I've done a lot of those things. I did a blog post. I don't know if you'd have seen it, uh, about six or eight weeks ago on one of those, uh, one of those things nobody ever really wants to write, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to write, which was just like, man, you know, you know, you come to these hallmarks in life and you stand back and look at yourself and you go, what the hell was I thinking? And it's like, it's just another level of clarity and you get this level of clarity and you look back and you go, you know, I've been driving my whole life you know, on the kind of wrong motives, you know, like I can teach people about motivation. I do a lot about the, you know, I talk a lot about the right fitness motivation, the wrong fitness motivations, negative motivations, positive motivations. But, you know, I think we're all running from something or towards something. And, and we use the, we use, you know, especially early on in business, I think we, you know, it's easy to use dysfunctional motivational strategies, which do work for a period of time, but they don't work infinitely and they don't work forever. Um, and so I wrote a blog post, which is really basically my, my, um, uh, my Jerry Maguire, you know, my, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that, you know, what the hell was I thinking kind of blog post. And I got a ton of feedback on it. It was hard to write, but you know, I'm also not embarrassed on it. You know, it's like, you know, it's what I've been doing and, um, it feels good. I think to just live totally authentic to, um, you know, um, I is who I is. Right. You know, right. you know, I'd like to, I'd like to tell you I got abs and six pack and that made me happy and life was perfect, but it ain't that way. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Now the, the last question I, I want to ask is obviously you've built this, you've built your definition of success following your strengths and your passion. That's obviously something that you recommend to everybody else out there, but a lot of people aren't doing that. Is there some kind of way maybe that you could help persuade them to say, listen, it's probably better to follow your per- passion in life than it is to maybe just follow the dollars? Um, yeah, I think the great thing about that is is that uh, if you go far enough following the dollars, you'll, fi- you'll figure out that the only way to get the dollars is to follow your passion. <laughs> you know, there, there's mm-hmm. short-term money to be made by faking it. Right. But, but you know, and, and if you really look at the guys like I bitched about earlier, some of the snake oil salesmen have made tons of money and, mm. you know, by, by deceiving people with Corda products or crap like that. Yeah. If, if you follow their stories after they disappeared, they ain't so good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not good things happen to people who get by for a while faking it on the dollar. And the reality is life's too short not to do what you want to do and to do what really resonates with your soul. And it's, you know, I think of uh, it all back to the strength word is, you know, live your life from a position of strength and living from a position of strength means living from the ground up in authenticity and in your power. And I mean, look at people like I always go back to Dr. Phil when he released the line of nutritionals eight years ago. And I said, man, that's so far out of his core strength and power. It's, it's, it's inevitable that it will fail. And it becomes an embarrassment and a cost and, and a legal problem and everything else. And it becomes a, you know, um, you know, a lot of people try to get into fitness, health, um, and supplements based on the idea that it looks like a good marketing place. I had a conversation with Anthony Almada a couple weeks ago. He's got some great new product out. And um, you know Anthony, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's original, one of the original science founders of EAS. And, and we were talking about the fact that why no one has ever successfully come from the outside in to either own, build, or run a nutritional supplement company. No one has ever done it from the outside. And it's simply because it is, it, it's something that arises from the inside. It's, it's, it's about passion. It's as much religion as it is business. Um, and it's something you have to live to get. You can't get it cognitively. You have to get it, you know, from the inside out. And, um, you know, it's just, it's that way. You know, I think, I think that's the way ultimately that, that life has to work and the way life does work. And, you know, you'll, you'll, the long road is you can fake it. The short road is you can get aligned with your passion purpose right now and live a hell of a lot more productive and effective life. Absolutely. And you can only fake it for so long until something else <laughs> happens. So, yeah. Yeah. And it just depletes you. It depletes you. It's like anything. It yeah. runs, you're, you're running the wrong and it's not, it's not got a fulfilling loop to it. It's not going to feed you back. Awesome. Sean, awesome. This has been a great session. I appreciate all your time and the amazing tips and stories that you shared for us. Where can people find out more about what you're doing? Well, I mean, my blogs right now, I've got uh, Full Strength Life, as I try to share about four or five times a week on Full Strength Life, something interesting. I have StartStrongMonday.com, which is my Monday start, which I'm going to blend those two soon. And FullStrength.com is my uh, my wonderful domain with my great um, nutrition product. And it's uh, all I have right now is a high-end nutrition shake for men. Yeah, it's for men. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> but uh, best nutrition shake in the world, bar none. And I, I invite people just to try that the two-week uh 
the two week reboot. And, uh, that's, you know, I kind of blended my, uh, reboot out of the book into the, the one shake a day for two weeks. Boom. It's a great one to start with. Awesome. And Sean, thanks so much, man. I hope you're having an awesome day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. You too, Eric. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,